Welcome concrete friends. My name is Tyler Lay and in this video we're going to do an example problem. It's not any example problem. We're going to design a reinforced concrete beam. Yeah. This is something that all civil engineers should know how to do. This is something that most students have homework over. So students, I hope this helps you. Now we're going to be doing it in some pretty cool ways. We're going to use some of our ninja tricks to cut through it and make this example super easy and save us some time. In this problem, we're going to be designing a beam that's simply supported. It's got a distributed load on it that's constant. It's got a compressive strength, 5,000 PSI, 60 KSI. It's in interior exposure. That means the cover. I've got my dead load, live load. I've factored my dead and live load right here. And now we're going to solve for our maximum moment. Our maximum moment can be found from WL squared over eight. That's from structural analysis. And if you don't remember, this is a parabola and that value is the top, 3456 kip inches. Awesome. Now I'm gonna assume my fee is equal to 0.9, okay? And we're gonna check this later to make sure that it's right. So I take my moment, 3456, and I divide by 0.9 and I find my moment I have to design for. Now I've been given my cross section 20 inches by 18 inches. It's given to me, right? I didn't have to figure it out. Somebody already knew what it was, okay? This means that we have our design moment, but we don't know anything else. We know our cross sections, but we don't know anything else. What I'm trying to say, so we go back to this magical equation, this one that kind of dictates the flexural strength of, of concrete. We know the moment, right? We know Fy, but we don't know this. We don't know D and we don't know A, A. We don't know it. We don't know what it is. But if you remember from one of my other videos, I talked about we can simplify this equation. I can just assume that this is equal to 0.9D. Now I have to check that, gotta check it, but I assume it is. So when I do that, I'll have MN equals AS FY times 0.9D. Awesome, this is better. Now I only have two things I don't know. I still don't know AS and I still don't know my D. I don't know what they are. So let's get a D, let's get a good guess. If you look at a cross-section, D, if you remember, is the distance from the compression fiber to the centroid of the tension steel, and H is the total depth, okay? I can find my D because I know some things, or I can guess some things. I know my cover, for example. I know that it's an interior exposure, and so I know my cover is going to be what? One and a half inches, right? My stirrup, what's my stirrup size? Hmm, well most people know that I usually either use a number three or a number four stirrup. I'm gonna use a number four because it's conservative, right? And a number four is a half inch diameter bar. I've gotta go through my cover, through my stirrup, and then I have to go half of my bar diameter, right? What size bar should I assume? Now I can assume any size bar I want, any, okay? But I, I'm going to assume a number 10 bar. Why? I could pick a bigger bar if I wanted to, but a number 10 is a pretty good size. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's right in the middle. So if I assume a number 10 bar, that's actually 1.27 inches diameter. That's the diameter of a number 10. And that divided by two, And my entire height, what was that again? Oh yeah, let's look. 20 inches. So D equals 20 minus all of this. So D is equal to 17.4 inches. Now this is my guess. It's just a guess. This is a guess. This is also a guess. And we're going to have to check both of them or verify them coming up. All right. So let's solve for the amount of steel I need. 3840, that was my moment. 0.9, Fy is 60. And what's my D? My guess was 17.4. If I solve all of that, I get 4.1 inches squared. I'm on my way. Now that we have the amount of steel, we just need to figure out what size and how many 
of the bars to make our beam work. We assumed a number 10 bar, but we're not married to that. We may need something different. So I'm gonna try all kinds of different sizes of bars. I've listed all their different areas, and then I'm taking the area I need, I calculated that previously, 4.1, and I'm dividing it by the area of each one of the bars. And I will calculate the number of bars that I need. Now I must round up, I must round up, I must provide more bars than I need. So if I need 5.2, I need six, 4.1, five, blah, 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 you get it from there. Awesome, so these are the number of bars I could use. Now I'm gonna pick a number 10. Why did I pick a number 10? Well, number one, I already assumed that to begin with, okay? And number two, I gotta think about how many bars can I fit across my cross section? Because I don't wanna get them too close together or I can't build it. And four is a good number, okay? Five might work, six makes me nervous, four is a good number. So I'm gonna try a number 10 and I'm gonna try to use four bars and now we're gonna check our assumptions. Let's see it. So AS provided, this is what I'm actually providing. Four times 1.27, that's the area of a number 10 bar. Area number 10 bar. Okay, that's 5.08 inches squared, and my D is the same D that I calculated before. I don't have to, if I picked a different bar, I'd have to redo the calculation, and that'd be fine, okay? But I didn't have to, I got lucky, ha! Okay, so I don't have to update it. Now, I am going to check my friend, the bar spacing, and two times my cover. What was my cover again? Yep, one and a half, plus, two times my stirrup diameter. What was that again? Yep, a half an inch. Plus four times my stirrup diameter. That's two times the bend radius. Watch a previous video about bend radii. It was cool. Four times my stirrup diameter gives me my bend radius plus two times N. What's N? N is the number of bars. Number of bars. I'm using four bars, four minus one, times my bar diameter or one inch, whichever one is larger. I'm using a pretty good size bar, 1.27 inches. What this does is this tells me what my minimum B is. My actual B I provided was 18 inches and the minimum B that I need is 13.6 inches. My B is greater than my minimum. Yes, I'm good. We're on the down hill stretch. We're almost there. I have to do some checks for my AS min. Okay. I've checked those here. I use these two equations and I pick the greater the amount of steel. Now I also, if you remember in the very beginning, I assumed my fee was 0.9. I have to check that. So I have to find the strain in my steel. And I'm going to use this funny equation, which is based on similar triangles, solving from this to find my strain in my steel. So I'm gonna move it around a little bit and find this. Now, I'm gonna need my C, but to get C, I need A. So I plug in and I get 3.98 inches. I divide by beta one. Beta one is 0.8 because I'm using F prime C equal to 5,000 PSI. My C is 4.98 inches, and now I get to plug into this equation. My D was 17.4 minus 4.98 divided by 4.98 multiplied by my E sub CU, that's my assumed strain on my concrete at failure, which is 0.003, and if I calculate all of that, my E sub S is equal to 0.0075, which is greater than 0.005, so yes, another good assumption. We have to do a final moment check. Now, why do we do this? Well, we have to make sure to validate our assumption about the 0.9D. We got to do that final check. So this is the moment that I gave you. This is the moment equation that we need. I start plugging in everything I know. My area, my FY, my D, my A over 2, and I calculate it. 4697 is greater than 3840. Everything is great. Everything is beautiful. I just knocked out a reinforced concrete beam design in about 10 minutes. How awesome is that? I wanna say a big, big thanks, big thanks to Hala Aliyah and also to Ivan Cleophas. 
Thank you so much for the great comments. Please, if you like my videos, like them, subscribe to them, comment them, let other people know about them. Let's go concrete.